Let's go over Yahweh's holy days. The holy days in the Bible are found in basically in Leviticus 23 and then in a few other places throughout the entire Bible and especially in the first five books of the Bible. Start off, if you haven't read the first five books of the Bible, sometimes called the Torah, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, you really have to read those five books just to start off. The holy days will not make sense to you, will not have their complete meaning if you haven't read those books, uh, especially Genesis and Exodus and then Deuteronomy. There's a lot of details in, um, in Numbers. But Leviticus also, obviously because Leviticus is where you're told to um, keep the holy days. I want to go over the holy days in this uh, video just briefly. Um, and actually all of these videos that I'm going to do on the holy days, I'm going to start off now just going over the, the holy days during the year and basically naming them. And then I want to do a separate video or two or three on each holy day. But my videos are never meant to replace your Bible study or to be an exhaustive study or explanation of the Holy Days. They're just to whet your appetite, to give you an idea of what they are, because we learn about the Holy Days by keeping them. Every year our knowledge of them gets better and through more and more study and a closer and closer relationship with Yahweh and with Yeshua. Now when I say you need to read the Torah and the first five books of the Bible to understand the holy days I also feel that you need to understand the holy days in the light of Yeshua the Messiah because without him the holy days are they're just um, a shadow they are just an activity they're something that was set up all pointing toward his coming and what he did and his resurrection and his return that's why the Holy Days are so important. That's why it's so important for you to stop keeping the pagan holidays, because they point at nothing. They actually do just the opposite. The two, think of what the two main images of what Yeshua the Messiah, the world calls him Jesus Christ. The two main images, if you ask people when they imagine Yeshua the Messiah, how do, what are the images that they have in their mind? One is as a baby, in a manger and the other is as a man hanging on a cross and this these are the two images that Satan wants to keep in everyone's mind and that's why even the, the pagan holidays of the world Christmas and Easter focus on that that's not the image that I have of my Messiah in my mind in my mind he's he's incredibly powerful He's all-powerful, and he's sitting at the right-hand side of his all-powerful father, our father. I don't see him as a weak child in a manger or a, a dead man hanging on a cross. And that's not an insult. It's just that we have to appreciate, of course, the Passover is important for his resurrection, but he's not on the cross anymore. He's in heaven. He's powerful. He's our savior. He's not nailed down. He's free and he's there to as our advocate. And so it's pro you know the even the the pagan holidays they seem innocent enough and they seem to point toward Yeshua, but they don't. They they put the emphasis in the wrong place. And of course we know they're pagan days, um, Easter with the eggs and the rabbits and Christmas with all of its pagan things too. So let's um go over some of the the biblical holy days and um, like I said you need to read the first five books of the Bible to understand what what they're even talking about and so that they have meaning for you when you see them again mentioned in the New Testament Now I have another video on the holy days and I do mention all the places most of the places that they're meant that the holy days are mentioned even in the New Testament when the Apostles and Yeshua were keeping them so these are for us, and that's why the Apostles and Yeshua kept them even during and after the death and resurrection of Yeshua. They kept keeping the Holy Days because we are supposed to keep the Holy Days. Check out that other video of mine about the Holy Days and you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's go over these briefly just to name them. Um, the, the year starts in the Bible, the biblical year starts in the spring, 
the northern hemisphere spring, which would be the fall for the southern hemisphere. And so it's basically in March or April. And it depends on the lunar cycle, so it doesn't coincide with a Gregorian calendar day, meaning the calendar that we use, March or April. It's different each year. But the first feast, the first day that we recognize, it would be the first uh, new moon, which starts off the new year. And that will be in March or April. And then we count 14 days, and on the 14th day, we keep the Passover. Okay, I'm just going to name them now. I'm not going to go into all the details of what we do on them until another, the next video. So the first one is the Passover. Then immediately the day after the Passover, we have the days of unleavened bread. And they're for seven days. And uh, the first day and the seventh day are high holy days. And dur so they're, those are called the days of unleavened bread. And we'll talk about those in another video, concentrating on that. And then during those seven days, on the Sunday that falls during those days, we have the Feast of First Fruits, or the wave, the day of the wave sheaf offering. I'll go into all of these in detail. I just want to get you familiar with some of the Old Testament um, language that mentions these. Because there are also, some of these have uh, Old Test an Old Testament way of naming them and a New Testament way of naming them. Okay, so that's in the spring. Then we count 50 days later and we come to the Feast of Weeks. In Hebrew it's called Shavuot. And it's also called Pentecost. But for now we'll call it the Feast of Weeks because that's what you're going to see when you read Leviticus 23. Then we jump all the way over. That, 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 the Feast of Weeks usually happens around, falls around the end of May or the beginning of June. Then we go to September. And sometime in the beginning of September, usually, we have the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets. Then, ten days later, is the Day of Atonement. Now, the Feast of Trumpets, you might know, also the Jews um, call this Rosh Hashanah. And then the Day of Atonement is Yom Kippur. And then four days later is the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is another seven-day festival. Or um, I remember when I first heard the word feast for these things. I, you know, I came from a Catholic background. I just, and just an English speaker, I heard the word feast, and I pictured Henry VIII and somebody having a big leg of lamb in their hand and everyone eating and eating, and it sounded like gluttony or something. But the word feast really comes from festival or celebration, um, and it's to celebrate Yahweh and his plan and Yeshua. And um, nothing strange or um, bad or gluttonous goes on during these days. So then the Feast of Tabernacles is for seven days, the first day, and then the eighth day is the um, one last feast, and that's called the, the, great, the last great day, and that's mentioned in the New Testament too. So for now, that's the outline of those days. And um, you can check that, like I said, read the first five books and get familiar with the feasts, uh, especially Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. And uh, Deuteronomy just rehashes all those days. And that's what Deuteronomy it means, the, the second naming of, uh, or the second pronounce, pronouncement of these days. So take a look at those. And um, hopefully this will help you to get familiar with some of the, the language and the names. And now in the next videos, I'm going to go into each one, starting with the Passover.